sisters, any honored guests, and my dear brothers. We all have our own story to tell about our first day coming to SJV. For me, my parents decided to take me a day early because we had to be here early Sunday morning. And so we spent the night in a suburb. Um, and unfortunately, when we arrived at the hotel, our battery, um, it died. It started smelling like rotten eggs, and we couldn't start the car. And so we're like, shoot, it's late at night. <laughs> what are we going to do? So we had mom go in the hotel and get some rest while dad and I made an excursion to go get a new battery. And so we went around. It was kind of sketchy, and it was dark. We eventually found a Walmart a couple miles away, uh, bought a battery, and brought it back. Uh, it took a while, though, and it was really hot uh, and humid out. And so I was really, really tired, really sweaty, uh, but I didn't, even think about, uh, I didn't even think about taking a shower uh, because I was so tired. And just, uh, so we showed up the next day, Sunday, needless to say, I was stinky, I was tired, I was hungry because I didn't eat much food, uh, I was scared because I didn't know anybody here, and uh, I was just cranky. And the first face that I saw, the first person I saw getting out of my car was Father John Bauer. Uh, since then, I can say that Father Bauer has been my priest hero. For you, for you who don't know, he's a former SJV staff member, now he's a pastor here in the Archdiocese, and he was the priest who accompanied us in Rome last year, whom Father Gitter uh, just took his place. Now, Father Bauer is a holy and excellent priest. If his tender witness does not, uh, does not melt your heart when he preaches, his magnanimous and humble joy will. It is very difficult, I think, to live out the virtues of magnanim magnanimity and humility together at the same time. For when we focus on magnanimity, it kind of turns into vainglory. And if we focus too much on humility, it can kind of turn into a uh, uh, lack of confidence and root, root, rootedness in the truth uh, and in our sonship uh, from God the Father. But, uh, but Father Bauer, I think, lives these two out really well. And I think he's a really excellent witness of this in the priesthood. Um, a couple of years ago, as some of you know, uh, Joseph Wynn decided to make a racquetball tournament uh, here for SJV. And I ended up meeting Father Bauer in the finals. And I kind of hate to say it, but we're in the finals, and I was a pretty prestigious tennis player, and so I, I destroyed Father Bauer in the finals. <laughs> it wasn't even close. I had him figured out before the game even started. But I was just really, <laughs> I was really, I was really impressed on how he kept his composure, though. Because uh, most guys, you know, when they compete, they get competitive, and they can, I don't know, they can get angry, make all these comments, get all frustrated. But Father Bauer had none of that. He, he really... I don't know, he was just really impressive uh, in his, I think, humble witness, just always, in spiritual conferences, he'd say things such as, uh, we always want to stay within the gaze of the Father. If, the cha if, if our chair in the chapel represents the gaze of the Father, we never want to leave the chair. And I can honestly say that I, I, I have never witnessed Father Bauer leave the chair within the Father's gaze, and I think that's just a true mark of humility. Uh, when we were in Rome, we all went to Assisi, and Father Bauer also, well, last fall, he, uh, he was in the process of becoming a third order Franciscan. So he's a Fran Franciscan um, as a diocesan priest. And so it was really cool to be in Assisi. This is the time right before um, he was going through that transition. And it was just awesome um, being there. We were kind of out in the mountains. There's a, a nice bronze statue of St. Francis just kind of lying in the grass. It was nice and misty. There wasn't many people. And I don't know, Father Bauer just radiated such a joy and his love of St. Francis and love of being there in, his, in Assisi. And he just had such a greatness of soul on that mountain uh, without even speaking words. And that's the best way I can describe it. But I really think, uh, I really think uh, that's a mark of his magnanimity. And then finally, uh, later on when we went in Rome, uh, there was a weekend that uh, Father Bauer asked me, hey, Ben, uh, did you wanna, do you want to go for a run tomorrow morning by chance? And I'm like, uh, well, sure, why not? What the heck? I have some time. And so we ended up, I ended up getting up, you know, 5.30, 6 in the morning. So it's just a nice, beautiful, crisp morning in Rome. Uh, shorts and a t-shirt. And I, I meet them downstairs in the Irish College, and I, uh, and I ask them, all right, Father Bauer, where are we going? To the Circus Maximus, Ben. And they're like, yeah, okay, here we go, let's do it. So we proceeded to run from the Irish College to the Circus Maximus. And we ran around it, not once, not twice, but three times, thus conquering the Circus Maximus with their sweat. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and 
Meanwhile, back at home, everyone's freezing at negative 20 below and getting sick. And so, uh, <laughs> I don't know, there's something about sweating with a guy in that, uh, that I think brings you together. Uh, just something masculine in that. Uh, and he just had such a greatness and soul in that, and it was just really cool to have, uh, to, to have him as a trainer there and, and to, really, um, to really walk with us and show us the way. And so, uh, I just really want to thank uh, Father Bauer for his profound participation in Jesus' priesthood and for walking with me and showing me with such proximity that the life of virtue and holiness, uh, uh, particularly in his paternal tenderness and his humble and magnanimous joy. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.